Okay, this is the supplement to the video perpetual energy device number one. Uh, there are some concerns and answers to questions that people will need. Some extra information I wasn't able to fit on the first tape, first video. And if you haven't already watched perpetual energy device number perpetual energy device number one, you need to do that. That's a prerequisite for this. Okay, in that first video, talked about a device where we have just like a uh, a uh, merry-go-round at the park. It spins around. It's weighted around. You, well, we want to vary it and weight it around the outer edge. And once you get it spinning so many RPMs, you put a little motor out here to the side. And once it gets going, like the kid's hand that keeps spinning the merry-go-round, when it first gets started going, it just takes a little effort to keep it going. And then we can put a generator on here, which, by the way, could have almost like a transmission, like a car does. So that the first concern is so that the uh, device doesn't drag down when you engage the, the generator. Why not have a gear ratio, just like uh, first gear on a car? It's very low, so that it doesn't uh, lug the engine down. You don't just put it right into fifth gear and try to start out and just get it up to speed. You have to you go through the first gear, which makes it easy on the engine. It just has a very uh, low gear ratio. You could do the same thing, have a transmission between this that I can't actually show you because this is a top view, but uh, between the, the uh, spinning disc and the uh, generator. And if you don't understand what I'm talking about, you need to go back and watch the first video or you need to go get an education in stuff that pertains to this, like physics and engineering, things like that. So really this is for people who uh, actually already know about this stuff. Or you can ask somebody to watch this who has the knowledge of it and maybe they can explain it to you. Watching, you need again to watch that first video before this to understand this. Perpetual energy device number one. Next consideration is economies of scale. Uh, again, with the concern about putting a generator on here, you get this thing going, try to engage the generator, it's going to lug it down. It's going to slow it down. Well, you can um, vary the size of this. We don't know. We don't know yet. That's why I need the experts on this. Whether the diameter of this should be in inches, should it be in feet, should it be in yards? I don't know. That's why I need you experts out there to run the economies of scale and see what's the most efficient scale to have this work at. Not very good drawing, but hey, it works. Next thing is electromagnetic levitation. This is the top view. This would be like a you know a disc on the ground. It's you know it's kind of circular, and you know here's the uh, generator. Got the little motor out here. There's a side view of it. Side. This one's, you know, top. See if we're getting that in the, yeah, we're getting that in the, uh, the picture. And side view. Okay. This is gonna have to be, uh, you know, held up somehow or another. But right here, where the center of this is spinning, the weight because of gravity is going to push down on where, whatever's holding this up so it can spin and it is going to cause friction and want to slow this down. It's going to work against the generator, it's going to work against the motor. Well if you have levitation down here with magnetic levitation you're going to have something like this, you're still going to have that disc but then you're probably going to have these little magnetic things holding it up off the ground and then on the side having Again, these magnetic things, as I'm calling them, <laughs> holding the disc, keeping it from going side to side. Something along that line. Now, it could look like um, there's variations on this. It could look like simply the disc having a tube up like this, and this magnetic stuff could be in the middle here. It could be magnetic, right on uh, magnetic uh, poles inside here, pushing on the very center of this, keeping it centered side to side and then at the top having a magnet that this right here is actually part of the disc and so it's going to hold it up. So here's the disc itself. It's going to look like this. Actually have an open part. Like that. And then running up through here would be like this. And this would never touch with the center of the disc. And you got the uh, 
generator up there. But with magnetic levitation, all the magnetic levitation could be either be in the innards, in the center of it, or we can put it like, you know, like somehow like this, if possible. I don't know how you guys are going to do it, but those are just possibilities. Again, you're going to have to work with this. Make it work, just like Henry Ford said, make it work. There's always a way to make it work. Zero gravity application already covered, also has to do with um, making this work in uh, space. Zero gravity application. We can take, and along with this, just hypothetically, just the theory itself, having magnets, magnet, uh, magnets underneath and on top, wherever the device is, we'll keep it centered top to bottom, and then on the side, would just like those trains that are magnetically levitated, you have magnets underneath the train. It's on a track. It's got magnets underneath and magnets on the side, keeping the train centered side to side and also up off the ground. Well, extend this idea and put magnets above the train and you can run a train through space where there's absolutely no gravity at all. You just have this tunnel where there's magnets left and right, up top and bottom, and you can run a train like this out into space. If you can make a big enough tunnel to go up into space, hey, you, gotta, you, can, do, you can use this and there you go. There are also, I want to mention at the last moment of this, um, other perpetual energy devices I'm going to be going through that the designs for and get them to you guys. We're having a real problem with uh, the uh, fuel situation, gasoline, the oil becoming scarce, things like that. So you say, well, why um, do we need this when we have things like wind, solar, and so on and so forth? Well, because of uh, things like, number one, it's another way to create electricity and which may work better in certain areas than others. Um, the materials may be possibly something coming up with an economical way to do this instead of some other way. This would work to be more simple and, and more economical to do. Another thing is this will work in space. Solar might work in space, possibly, I don't know, but definitely wind won't work in space. Um, water power, you can't run a hydroelectric plant out in space, the water would be floating around everywhere. So this has applications out in space. This is for like, you know, future stuff. Get this going, plus it does have, have applications on the Earth. So let's uh, get this going. I want to see some videos on this.